Buongiorno! <laughs> Molto season, bene! <laughs> season dos. Is dos Italian? It, it, yeah, no. <laughs> it's not, it's Spanish. <laughs> Welcome to episode two of season two of Discretion Advice. I'm John Hill and I'm with Mark McNamara. It's so good to see you. I feel like this is it. Like we're we're officially back into it. I know we had our season premiere the other week, but like this is this is now we're back home. I can see Cameron in the middle of the of us. I can see you. This is just like I can hear you now. There's not ears. Oh, you shouldn't say and that. That's I didn't mean that. We'll Lessons leave it out. Uh, Merry almost Christmas as well. Merry almost Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and you know all the other stuff. Everything in between. Everything uh, between. Let's see. We have a big show today. Evan Ross Cass is going to be here. Friend of the pod, friend in life, and friend to all gays and pop culture lovers everywhere. I'm excited. I have, I have some questions for him. Okay, We're going to go deep into White Lotus. Deep into the Lotus. And uh, oh, you and I are going to put Lotus. on wigs. We are going to play a little game called Chowing the Box later, where I will be Lucia, and you will be Mia, and we're going to chow each other's boxes. I haven't read the rules, but I think that's it. Yes, that sounds good. There's a little... I'm hoping technical difficulties don't prevail, and that we uh, we really kill it. Cameron, are you frozen, or are you just sitting there? Oh, okay. He's just um, unimpressed. <laughs> two things I want to tell you. Two <laughs> updates for you personal, personally, Mark. Tonight... You ready? I am leading the Q&A at Countess Luann. I wish you were in Los Angeles because I would bring you as my <gasps> guest. I would want you to come. I'm doing the Q&A. So for 15 minutes in the show, a very a very Countess Luann Christmas, I believe the show is called. They stop down for 20 minutes for like a local comedian, which apparently I'm a local Los Angeles comedian. Regional theater. Wow. Uh, a comedian who gets zero laughs. Um, and I'm <laughs> going to come one. out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to uh, do a 15-minute Q&A with the audience, which is actually my specialty. If you remember back to our season one finale at Green Room 42, I did go out. I like going in the audience. I like it's uh, touching it's, the people. Always something uh, to mock down there. Um, so wish me luck tonight. And also, I went Good to luck. dinner a couple of weeks ago. My friend said, I'm bringing a friend. My friend so-and-so. And he said his Ooh. name. I didn't recognize it. And in walked Michael Boston. Uh, and so I feel like... <laughs> You read me for you thought that I was cold and that I had beef with Michael Boston, but actually, no, like, I just knew that you didn't you, like him. I didn't. I don't not like him. I was in a you bad mood when we shot like that him. episode, and his brother was on, and I felt left out of their like twin language that they have. Okay, but so you didn't so like fun. him. That's, a, that's a that's a way of saying it. But you no, had I dinner with him. Did you get along? Did you rekindle? Lovely, lovely young okay, man. Good. Had a great time. Loved him. We had a great time. So squash that beef. Oh, beef has been squashed. Mm. Okay, good. Okay, speaking of squashing the beef, did you watch the Casey Anthony documentary? No, it's top of my list. You haven't watched it? I have so many things. Okay. There were two things to watch last night. Either the Casey Anthony documentary, I, I turned on HBO Max, and the other option was the Miss Cleo documentary, and I said, "There's mm, no comp, tough there's no choice, contest for tough me. choice." Okay, Although between it wasn't very good, it wasn't. I haven't seen it, but between this episode and the next, I want you to see the Casey Anthony because I need I need to talk about it. I have been living my life thinking that this woman has killed her child, and it seems so obvious, especially after the first episode. It's only three episodes, so it's not a deep dive. Top mom. She did. I, I don't think she did. Now, really? it took till the third episode to change my mind because I was really strong and like baby murderer. But I mm-hmm. think her dad did it. I do. I can't wait to watch. I love Nancy Grace. I love anything Casey Anthony. She, I Nancy think Grace might, is in it. It might be one of those situations Clips. of like, yes, she might be a psychopath, but no, she didn't kill the baby. Like, you know, we like to cast those people like kind of like that. Like Amanda Knox was kind of like not that chill and kind of like cold but it doesn't mean she murdered she just was like a rando girl Wait, i don't know bleep that. Amanda might have did it they both might have did it. they might have been working in cahoots yeah we're in cahoots okay speaking of casey anthony and things that just like murder my vibe i want to talk to you about texting and it's something that really bothers me how do you feel if someone texts you hi it depends on who it is but i know what you mean could not make me more furious could not trigger me more a hi or a hey don't you dare text me hi or hey fuck off 
That's the most annoying thing. What do you want? We're not pen pals. What do you want? Text me. I'm not, I'm not keeping a long distance conversation through a text. If you're texting me, ask me a question. There's nothing that gets me more irate than a hi or hey, what? Am I alone? I do, under, I do understand what you're saying, but there are certain friends that I want to keep in touch with that I don't want to have a phone call with. And I don't want to FaceTime, okay. but I do want to keep up with. So I don't mind a hey. I don't know how to explain. Hey, that. what are you up to tonight? Or like, follow I know what it you mean. Sub type. I don't of disagree. Question or reason. I don't disagree. Ugh. And I just got one a second ago that triggered me. Hi, fuck off. Come here. Sorry. Let That's me ask it. you a question. Go for it. If this little guy wanted to text me hi, I would say That's totally fine. Uh, my dog has I lost wouldn't. the use of his hips. <laughs> Um, so how does or it like, he's not jumping as well. So like that's on my list for, uh, my Christmas, my Christmas gifts. He's going to get a staircase for the bed. Um, uh, anyway, I don't mind a high. It depends I'm on who it is. I'm going to text you high so- every day and then you'll, you'll see. But I like you'll that. Cause see. like, I want to hear you're from all you. all see the truth. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to hear from you. I, 99% of people, I don't want to high from you. But what if someone you, from work says hi? No, absolutely not. But a close personal friend, someone from maybe the recovery community, someone I want to like lift up and be a cheerleader in sobriety. <laughs> no, say I hi, like I'm drunk from, or something. No, but like, I like, you know, I'm a youth group girl, as you know. Oh my God, no, take me to a cliff. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Although I do want to say this, which was it, uh, the opposite of being mean. Someone came up to me at our live show that we did in LA uh, for the pineapple. And they said, I'm so sorry to interrupt you and say hi, because I know you don't like to talk to people. <laughs> and that is not true. If anybody, if any of the four people that want to talk to me, see me in person, Come up and say hi. I'm not an asshole. I love to Same. talk to people. I love to meet people. Just don't text me hi. So that I want to. I want to also squash that with me being a bitch. I'm not. I. You are a bitch. Okay. No I'm I'm kidding. <laughs> I like to say I'm like the to problem. It's me. <laughs> I have you listened to that full album like on repeat? Or are you done with Start it? Start to finish. I can't wait for her to come out. I think Lavender Hayes is all about her being a lesbian, and Maroon is about some coochie that she was eating. So I, I get the I get the what are they called Easter egg drops? You think what do she's the kids a lesbian? Call them? Oh yes, she's for sure a lesbian, and I think she was going to come out before she had to re-record all of her masters again. So she had to do that first, get her bags before she get the coochie. But yeah, I do think she's a lesbian. But all in good time, she can come out in her own little lavender haze. So all these boyfriends and stuff have just been a ruse. Didn't you used to have girlfriends? No, gay, 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 gay. gay. Really? I don't know. Mm. I think people in the entertainment industry, especially someone positioned like Taylor to be very wholesome in this, that, and the other, it's a business. Taylor Swift is a business. It's not a human being. I mean, it is, but maybe Tay Tay is a human being. But I think she just has to be straight for the audience. That's going to be exciting to see. I hope she comes out. But hold on. Give me some things to throw out at the audience or to count us Luann tonight. What are like three things? If the audience doesn't have good questions, what do you want to know from Luann? What can I ask? Um... Well, she's gone pretty hard on Bethany and the whole podcast thing. Um, and I I don't know. I, do I mean, now I have more questions for Bethany on that than Luann. So I don't know. Ask her, um, how does she feel how about Ramona never figure? returning? Uh, Bethany's not going to return. How does she feel about the new gals? Um, one's already quit. So I guess there's lots of Roni stuff you can ask her. She has the spinoff with Sonia. Um, ask her if she's ever going to take singing lessons. I don't know. Things like that. Are Such you dating as. anyone right now? Where the fuck? How did the, where did that come from? I mean, we got, we got to talk about something interesting. What are you, are you going out with someone? Are you getting laid? <laughs> What's going on? Let's talk. Let's let the people have something. Cameron's fingering us. Um, so physical evaluations, the second series of the swords is out now. So check that out on nakedsword.com. Physical evaluations starring, Raphael Alencar, Bo Butler, and a bunch of others. Okay. She's playing coy. I'm going to assume that's No, yes. I'm not dating so somebody. We've po- talked about this personally. Are you dating someone? I'm just not in the space that is, I don't, I'm not seeking that right now. Mm. I'm seeking like Cameron's finger. What, are you dating someone? Yeah, a couple people. A couple people? Do they listen to this? It's time for Thought Topics. <laughs> 
Um, all right. <clears throat> I also want to say, get a get a Wondery Plus subscription to listen to my scripted podcast starring Latrice Royale. Santa Claus is called Naughty. Listen to it. Um, okay, Mark. Uh, what do you think about the Phoenix cop who was accused of making porn while on duty? I assume that you uh, support that. I have went and I've saw it. So it's straight porn. So that's, you know, it's not necessarily my gig. His his name is... King Nut a lot. King Nut a lot. Rico Blaze, but he goes by King Nut a lot. He was apparently working from home. So I don't. How does a cop work from home? Is he investigating something? He started porn in 2019. He got hired in 2020. So are the police not even doing background checks on people? There's a big story that's just come out uh, that is uh, pertinent to your interests the Scream okay. 6 trailer. Let's just move on from the porn cop because we all love the, the Scream porn 6 cop. trailer. Muscles, okay. Where you at? I have so many, Officer Pap Smear, I have so many mixed emotions about the Scream trailer. I'm so excited that it happens in New York. The teaser it happens on the subway. Thank you for wearing a mask on the subway. It's very cute and kind and all those things. So I like that. But I just, I'm not, I don't get into the two leads. I'm not big on them. Just don't, do not kill Mindy Meeks Martin like they did with Randy in Scream 2. Do not kill her there, here. I know Kevin Williamson, who wrote the original Screams, said he does regret killing Randy in Scream 2. So I really hope that's not the same fate for Mindy. God, let's just hope. Oh, you know what's a fun little Scream tidbit? Adam Shankman, who was on the last episode, came over the other day, and he actually played the Scream killer in Scream 2 in the scene where they were at the uh, the Greek chorus and Nev is on stage at the theater. Because there was so much choreography involved and you can't see out of the Scream mask, he said the only thing that you can see out of is the mouth. So he actually donned the cape and was this killer in that sequence in Scream 2. Little known fact. Oh my God. I, I thought I recognized that ass. <laughs> Uh, I love you guys had your own little kiki in New York. That's nice. Yeah, we had fun. Uh, He came over to... Sorry, go ahead. No, no. He came over to Rob Harmon's birthday party, and then he had a little reunion. TJ Miller was there, who they worked with on uh, Rock of Ages. And I'm not going to say who, but they had a a lovely conversation about a co-star from both of them that... You can guess who it was. Channing Tatum? Sure. What else you got? Don't get me in trouble. Uh, flight attendants kicked off three passengers off a flight at Flint Bishop International Airport uh, because they said penis. <laughs> Austin Wolf effect. <laughs> you can't even say it. You know, you can't you used to be able to suck it and write it? Now you can't even say it. Can't even say it. Penis erasure. I was. Uh, I've been on flights this week. You know, my my patience is just. Uh, it's. I, I'm. I'm done. Domestic air good. travel. Fuck yourself. There's not Although even any good I movies became right Delta now. Gold, I know that everyone's rich and famous, and they all became like platinum and diamond shit. But I'm just gold. But I'm so proud of my gold status. <laughs> like gold is cute. I was. You're gonna get upgrades, right? I was afraid of using a credit card, and then I decided because I started following the douchey. The I started doing like the points guy thing. Anyway, long story short, I'm gold, and I'm excited about it. And I want to get yeah, fucked funny. in that bathroom. Not. Don't say it out loud, though. Why? You'll get kicked off. You oh, can't don't say, say penis. penis. I know. No. Code word. Um, and there's also not the full story about the Norwegian woman who says that, uh, well, she's getting jail time for saying that women can't be lesbians. Anyway, that's, that's for the next episode. Maybe, uh, you're my favorite lesbian of 2022. And my resolution is to, uh, I don't really have one. Yeah. Great. To be Perfect. present, to be present with your, with your body. Oh, be here, be present. I am so excited what's happening next. We're going to talk about the White Lotus with the expert of the White Lotus, Evan Roskatz. I am from Sicily. I loved watching the show. I've been there many times. I love watching all the spots that they went to. I'm super into it, so I'm super excited, super, super to talk next. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Oh, wow. Just right off the top, Evan Ross Katz wants to jump in. even Without even being introduced, Evan Ross Katz, Hold author, podcast host, back. fashion journalist. What is your problem? What do you, what do you want to interject before we even introduce you? No, I was just going to say I was Googling our other guests' work right now. And so I just was going to comment it's on the It's distracting. First, it might be distracting at work. Thing that came Speaking up, of, but... you know him as Liam from Sean Cody and Liam Hunt as the upcoming star of Worship Me on NakedSword.com. It's Liam Hunt. Hi, Liam. Hey, good to be with you. So, all. What, for what did you find about Liam that was distracting, Evan? 
Well, the first thing that I came up on my search was two jocks jerk to porn in bedroom. And lo and behold, it's two jocks jerking to porn in the bedroom. <laughs> that's me and that's me and JC. <laughs> your husband. Descriptive. Yes, my husband. Are you married? No. Yeah, we're married. Um, Can I ask about the um, yes. the wallpaper in the video? The two jocks jerking. Is this? Are we in a hotel in this video, or where is this taking place? Because it's very um, uh, very it's California. Hotel. Yeah, uh, it wasn't actually. It was uh, it was in Hawaii, but uh, yeah, it was a hotel. Oh. At the White, at Lotus. The White Lotus. At season the White one. Lotus, Hawaii. <laughs> we were there during White Lotus season one. Yeah. Very nice. So we're going to do a queer interview. But first, I want to get a little backstory of our two guests. Liam, you ran for governor of Indiana. What the fuck? Tell us about that. Yeah, way back when. Uh, I grew up in Indiana. Uh, uh, saw some opportunities to hopefully change uh, the place. Was unable to win but uh i think we definitely changed the discussion and uh had a lot of fun doing it travel like all, all around the state um chicken dinners all the all the good stuff but you lost i but i lost yeah <laughs> thanks thank you for clarifying that's what i always like to leave but we it. want you to run again would you run again uh yeah i mean probably not in indiana but uh but yeah i'd consider it and do you know pete Buttigieg? judge uh, I don't know him very well. We've met once. Uh, I, I met his uh, husband a couple times at different events. Did you guys ever make out? No, we didn't. But that would have yeah. been fun. Next time. If you do run again, I do have some new uh, tasteful stills from our last movie you could use. I can't wait to see them. Good. And Evan, I did some thorough research on you. You are the son of Diana Ross. And you... I'm just fucking with you. You wrote... The tell all, everything you need to know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Tell us about that. I'd rather tell you about my mom, Diana Ross, um, which by the way, <laughs> I get tagged in photos from, so for people that don't know, Diana Ross's son's name is Evan Ross, uh, married to Ashley Simpson. So if the lore continues, I am technically a disciple of Jessica in some way, or there's some lineage here. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah, I wrote the book about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, all due to the fact that all roads lead to John Hill. It's very much uh, because of John Hill that I first met Sarah Michelle Gellar. So it's all Wait, coming full what? circle. You're welcome. How? And that's how you're going to meet you. Janet Jackson, Mark. Through it, you? It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a long story. It takes place in Brooklyn, 2016, 2015, and Whole Foods and like making cookies. But uh, we made it happen. And, um, and Evan's the gift that keeps, keeps on giving in my life. And you, we just saw each other in New York. Uh, and he, listen, I got to say, I always mock you for your fashion, but side note, I actually have the worst fashion and Evan's trying to help me in my fashion journey. Uh, I just bought some shoes on Ukes, so I'm working on it. Thank you, Evan, for doing the God's work. He needs it. He it's does, bad. but I appreciate, well, first of all, a lot of people need it, but I appreciate <laughs> his willingness to do better. Um, and I think that the good thing with John is that there is style in there that just needs to emerge. And a lot of people in this world lack style altogether. So John is on a course. It's just a matter of, you know, we want to stay on the road and, and not fall into the trees. By the time I'm dead. I'll look cute. No, 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 no. I'm giving it okay. like eight months. <gasps> okay. I'm on a journey. I'm like Lord You're of the Rings. You're on a journey. Lord Jesus. of the Meat Rings. <laughs> I, I lovingly give you shit about your fashion because I'm projecting. I'm insecure about mine. So I give you shit about yours. But um, I can take it. I can take it, baby. Speaking of taking it, Evan, you interview people for you talk to people for a living. Who do you just don't want to talk to again? Is there anybody that's come through it and you're like, the door is closed? I would say more people than less people. I, I feel like lately um, famous people just aren't as fun anymore just because <laughs> for several reasons, but like the two that I'll mention is I think too many people are famous right now. The bar, the barrier to entry is too low. So a lot of people that have name recognition or face recognition are not worthy of the platform. So that's one big thing. And then the other thing is I feel like, and this I have some empathy towards, but because of the nature of pull quotes and how sort of virality works right now, I think celebrities are afraid to say something that can be taken out of context and recontextualized. And so because of that, there's a lot of like, I get told in advance, you can't ask about X, Y, Z thing. And it's like, you should let me ask about X, Y, Z thing. Like we should discuss it and either like, you know, 
break through into something or, but like the avoidance of so many topics I think is just makes my job less fun. So I'm actually more into talking to less famous people at the moment. Like us. That's why I'm here. I'm just here we go. <laughs> Perfect. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, let's talk about a queer in review. Shall we get right to it? Yes, let's do it. Yeah. It's almost the end of, uh, end of the year. I'm excited. To yeah. Get rid of it. We made it. Okay. First things first, trending things. I'm just going to name a bunch of shit. You guys pipe in. Harry Styles. I want to try the nail polish. Harry and Meghan. Bored. Yeah. I don't, mm. yeah, I don't care about royals. Bored cringe. I would be cringe if I was no, less bored. I'm not so interested in anyone who wants to tell their own story. Right. Okay. I, and don't we know the story? A... We know the whole story. Well, kind of. from their perspective, we don't, but... But perhaps what you're the only at. story I want to hear is two jocks jacking off in bed in with Hawaii. a nice wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, let's just roll it, roll tape. Netflix. Okay, 10 I'm season. just going to barrel through the rest of these: Britney Spears, Jen Shaw, Julia Fox, Kanye West. Anything to say about any of them? No. Okay, <laughs> moving on. John, take the next. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, is it t- okay? Are we still doing this, or do you want to play? The, We're this on game? dumb things gay people care about. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Don't worry, darling. Cast drama. Evan, you uh, interviewed Olivia Wilde. Did you, how was that? Is she okay? I can't answer whether or not she's okay, <laughs> but I feel like I am really invested in the Don't Worry, Darling drama in that I do think it's a rare instance of there being a there there around like everyone's speculating like something must have happened, um, but I'm pro-friendship. I just think, Yeah. They all seem crazy. Leah Michelle joining Funny Girl. I'm excited for her. I, I love that this year. I love the whole epic situation. Me too. Like we I love mean, a comeback. We love a comeback. Maybe this isn't the popular opinion, but I'm like very here for the Leah Assans. And uh, me too. I, I think at the end of the day, like she's so fucking talented, and yeah. I think talent supersedes being like a good person, as it should. <laughs> she sounds amazing. See it before. I'm not going to see it now. Oh. Hey, you can scream the cast album. Yeah, exactly. I'll wait for it. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, there are other things. Will Smith and the Oscar slap. Liam, were you were you riveted? I was riveted for fifteen seconds. Exactly, and then I lost it. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? Uh, on every year end review this year is Kim Kardashian's ass in that Marilyn Monroe dress. What's the final word on that, Evan? fascinating a a really interesting story start to finish you know the choice to do it the execution of it who owns the dress uh you know uh the idea of who gets to hold on to someone's legacy posthumously a lot there i haven't landed anywhere on it but of all of like the kim k stories that have ever existed that one holds a lot of weight for me and so does the dress (laughs) how do you it couldn't hold all the weight actually (laughs) (laughs) we're in a room full of podcasters how do you feel about bethany going back and doing a housewife podcast and all the backlash with that. I am listening. So I feel like that kind of says it all at the end of the day, which is kind of my general consensus on Bethany where it's like, I when, when she's someone I love to hate emphasis on the love. Um, I think it's like a regressive move for her, but I think she's at a regressive point in her career. And I hope this is the leading off to her joining Roni legacy. I can only hope mm-hmm. that this is sort of like a, the door is ajar. Stepping foot so back in. It was kind of like, you broke up with me. You told everybody I had a nasty butthole, and now you want to come home and fuck me. It was just a little out of the blue for me. But go yeah. for it. John, I have to ask you. I mean, like, so there was the moment on Watch What Happens Live, the best episode of Watch What Happens Live in years when Bethany was on. And then Bethany expressed after the fact that she felt a little ambushed by the situation. I think those were her words. Um, what's your take on sort of the aftermath of that Watch What Happens Live appearance? I think it's only good. These people... You know, the, even the fact that she has the podcast talking about the self-referentialness of it all is is what it's all about. So, of course, how it would do it would be bad for her, for business to leave Watch Happens Live and say, "Great closure." You have to say, "Oh my God, can you believe it?" You know, so it only moves it all forward. I love it, and I think it's great she's doing the podcast. Like she is some she's a, she's the best at what she does. You know, she's the best at being um, Bethany. Is there something? Um, what would you say, just so we can move it along? What do you think? Is there like a fashion moment of 2022 that we will live that will live in infamy, like for years to come? Like, what would we look back on this year and say, like, that was 2022? 
I think it would be Heidi Klum's uh, Halloween costume. Oh my worm. god, <laughs> <laughs> the worm! <laughs> I feel like it's high so fashion good. couture, but also like very indicative of like where we where we are at societally. And I do think that that like image will remain burned in our collective consciousness. Yeah, is she now in a place where she has to do that every year? Like she has to one up herself. Good. That's she why she did it this to, year. To, yeah, but like. I don't think she's got a lot of others. Well, I think she does actually. But I'm I, oh. if if this is where she puts her attention towards one upping, it's like I think that's a good use of Heidi Klum's talents. I agree. So it was so messed up, so ugly and amazing and like perfect. <laughs> and the fact nothing... that it was you couldn't move, you had to lie down and hop around. You couldn't even have a, a one digit showing. There's something so, I don't know if gratifying is the word, about like hot people being like uh, consciously ugly. Look, I guess that's why I, I did this today. It's like when a guy with a really <laughs> hot body like puts a shirt on yeah. and it's just sort of like knowing what's yeah. underneath of it all. And so I applaud Heidi for going the route of like, I'm a supermodel, so I'm going to present as the antithesis. I think that is very savvy. The ugliest thing you can, can, uh, can see. Uh, Liam, do you have a New Year's resolution this year? New Year's resolution. Uh, yeah, do more. Uh, do more shoots. <laughs> we, can, we can introduce you to Mark McNamara. I shot him twice <laughs> in Big Bear. After I saw you, I shot him with Bo Butler and with Morgan Thick. Both coming soon on NakedSword.com. But let fun. me change Big this. I want to talk about the tight lotus, the white. Sorry, let's move from tight lotus to white lotus. <laughs> How was your, how do you feel about the ending, Evan? I know this is like, this is your wheelhouse. You're the expert, the go-to on this. Give us the final say. Is it good or not? Oh, yeah. I'm of the mindset where like, if Mike White is doing it, it is good. Um, I'm not like pro the decision to kill off my favorite character and by proxy one of my favorite actors, but I understand why it was done. And I think that I think that there, this is a platform that has brought her back into the mainstream consciousness. I think great things are going to happen from here. I think we're primed for a great third season. But particularly, I just love the fact that we got like seven weeks and we're out. You know what I mean? Like it was this journey that felt very like for seven weeks, we all had this thing that we were talking about, prognosticating about, thinking about, conjecturing, et cetera. And now it's done. And I think more media should take a note of like that specific span of interest. Seven you, weeks. You posted something about uh, where third, where season three could take place. Do you really think uh, Japan? Well, they're currently scouting in Asia, but um, not, I mean, I know Japan is on the table. I'm sort of prone to like Indonesia really interests me as does the Philippines as mm. far as locations. But I've heard some people say that they would be interested in like uh, St. Moritz, like in Switzerland, like a sort of like a ski retreat season, Ooh. which I think could also be interesting. <laughs> I'm just like the more white Lotus seasons we have, the better I think society would be. So I think, yes, yes to all of them. Do it all. I'm excited. I, I listened to the little after show with Mike White, and he was saying that the first season was more about money, the second one about sex, and the third one is going to explore religion. So it kind of does make sense that it would be somewhere in Asia and we get that Eastern feel. That would be something we haven't seen at the Lotus before. Totally. But at the same time, it's like, you could do like a white Lotus Tampa and like, I'd be <laughs> riveted. So I don't like as much as I love. There's these, no like, four seasons beautiful... in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, build one for the show. <laughs> like, I'm just saying it's like as much as I like Lotus these Albert exotic Kirby. locales, like it can go wherever and it will work. True. And I, I love the ending. The, the ending to me was just so perfect. It hit the sweet spot. And I just love how she kind of overcame because you didn't want anyone to kill her. If someone killed her, it would be too sad, too hard. She had yeah. to die in like a Tanya way. And I just thought that was so I, I loved how they did it. And then I read you she kind this. of begged him to take, do a take of her surviving, but that didn't happen. Mm. <laughs> you got this. Can I ask a question you to this. you guys? So, you know, this show famously is like very sex positive and there were so many hot guys and hot moments on this show. Like, for instance, I feel like no one's really talking about that final shot of Ethan and Harper having sex and you see like the arch of his lower back where like it meets his ass. What for you were like we the screamed. standout images uh, or who are the standout men for you that made you want to go into a bedroom in Hawaii and just rub one out? Oh, God. It, it would have to be his prosthetic dick in that first episode. You tweeted enough so with the prosthetic dicks. I don't have a prosthetic. <laughs> We've had it. Swinging it. 
I don't know. I mean, I personally wasn't as sexually attracted to anyone on the cast, but I found them really? all sexy. Oh. I would not like to have sex with Ethan. I would not like to have, well, maybe Cameron. Uh, okay, I would say Albie's ass was amazing. Albie's ass and legs. Albie, it's, yeah, but he's too, you know he's, take his innocence. There's so, do it. that the, the thickness of, of the ass mm-hmm. and legs is incredible. Mm-hmm. And also the shower scene of with what's the his face. Uh, just when with he, you know, it, it was, uh, exactly. Um, brief when, you, when it was kind of like you were saying like it's an accident like oh oops i have a really hot body i wasn't really showing it off and you're like wow i mean this is a perfect specimen yes um, i feel that like first um, shower scene yeah adam demarco was giving me like old school sean cody i mean like 2011 2012 <laughs> yeah. sean cody body yeah. that you really don't see on that site anymore unfortunately um but i really that's really why liam left that body type. gone left sean cody you couldn't get that anymore you guys ready for a game Let's play Chowing the Box, where me and John are going to dress as Lucia and Mia. We're going to give you an Italian phrase, and you have to guess what it means. John, you're with Evan. I'm with Liam. Don't fuck this up. Okay. John, go first, because I need my wick. We might have done this differently, but um, but we'll get through it. <laughs> I'm Mia. Come so you're going you're gonna to say, how is this game going to work? You are going to say a phrase in Italian. Evan is going to guess what it is. If he gets it right, your team gets a point. And then I'm going to do the same with Liam. Okay. I did mine a little bit differently. I'm going to play mine from Google Translate, and I'm going to give you options. <laughs> okay. This is the first one, okay? Okay. Um, and I'm, your options are, are as follows. I'll well, play it first. Aiuto. Il mio patrigno è dentro di me. Okay. Does that mean, help, I've fallen, I can't get up, B, help, my cock's too big, or C, help, my stepfather is inside me? I'll play it again. <laughs> Aiuto. Il mio patrigno è dentro di me. Okay. Answers, please. Option two. You think that says, help, my cock's too big? Yeah. Li- Liam, answer. I think it's three. Okay. He's inside, help, the grandfather's inside of you. Help, my stepfather inside of me. And Mark? Bitch, I wasn't listening. I had to play too. <laughs> okay, right. No, uh, actually, Liam is correct. You've heard that before. Uh, help, my stepfather's <laughs> inside me. <laughs> okay. This is a setup. That's cute. Okay. Next one. Here's, yes. I didn't do the whole Google Translate situation, so I'm just going to read it. <laughs> Suki cosi right. tanto cazzo, che il tuo el elato puzza come un sacchetto de noche ilonare miste. That means one of these three things. You suck so much dick that your breath smells like a bag full of mixed nuts. Mitzi, misty watercolored memories of the way we were. Snooky loves Italian pizza at night. Which I one? Know the one? Answer. Do you really? I what? think it, it was the second one, right? No, it's the third one. <laughs> You're both wrong. It's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you suck so much dick, your breath smells like a bag full of mixed nuts. <laughs> But you said noche, which I thought was night, but I guess... Ah, uh, noche. That's what I thought, too. The <laughs> <Yeah>. noche <laughs> il not miste. Depends on what region you're from. Nuts, uh-huh. night. Yeah. Sicilian and Italian are different languages, just to... Yeah, oh. there on that. No wonder I don't get it. <laughs> but okay. these are Italian. These aren't Sicilian. All right, next, John, go for it. Next one here is your clue. Questo lubrificante è così appiccicoso. Literally, it was like twice that fast when I originally did it. Like, the internet is so slow. Does this mean uh, this lube is so sticky? This lube tastes like cheese? Or this lube is from Olive Garden? One more time. Questo lubrificante è così appiccicoso. Uh, Evan, what's your answer? Sorry, can you repeat the options? Yes, this lube is so sticky. This lube tastes like cheese? Or this lube is from Olive Garden? Questo lubrificante. Okay, so I think it's one, but then I'm like, okay, is John too subversive to go with the obvious but judging by your fashion sense i'm gonna go with one liam <laughs> i think it's one because i didn't hear any cheese you're both correct oh <laughs> i'm not subversive enough to not be obvious <laughs> good job mia I actually you That's know what john this you. hair on you is like giving me patty stinger i it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> wait have you had patty on this podcast yet we sure haven't we need to get her on ASAP. we need to do a matchmaking episode yeah Actually, oh. Cameron, make a note. Make a note. Okay, last one. All right. The the quote or the quote is, "In fila il tuo cazzo delle de mention de quest bar nel mio culo appamento de Peppa Pig." <laughs> Number one, 
Your dick you, tastes know. like Peppa Pig flavored Quest Bar. Number two, Peppa Pig eats small babies like Quest Bars. Number three, <laughs> stick your Quest Bar sized dick inside my hungry Peppa Pig hole. I know it. Okay, I want it to be three. Evan. I think it is three because of the order yeah, it's of three. the word. I'm your more. It is three. Good job, <laughs> yeah, guys. I mean... Wait, here's okay, my so last one. We know one. Italian. <laughs> Wait, here's my last one. This is dumb. Okay. Buongiorno, signora. Posso interessarle un po' di attracco spaziale? Why are they so slow? Uh, okay, does this mean, good morning, ma'am, may I interest you in some hole? Good morning, ma'am. May I interest you in some surf and turf fist and felch? Or good morning, ma'am. May I interest you in some space docking? One more time. <laughs> Buongiorno, signora. Posso interessarle un po' di attracco spaziale? Oh, that's easy. Okay. <laughs> uh, final answer, Evan. Option three. Uh, Liam. I'm going with option one. Oh, wow. Evan, you're correct. It was space docking. Oh, this works. Congratulations. So, Buongiorno. Yeah, what do I win? You These win wigs. this wig. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Fine I'll luck. come deliver it today. All right, Evan, where can people follow you? What do you have coming up? What can we plug? Wait, is this over? Well, actually, we have one more thing to do with you, but let's wrap it All up right. real quick. Oh, no, Evan's not. Evan's coming back to do Falcon Police. So, Liam, thank you so much for being here. You're in Italy right now. Your, your husband is singing there, correct? Yeah, he's singing here. We're in Italy. All of the phrases you just gave us, I'm going to use them all today. Buongiorno, oh, madame. Hope he does it all space to you. <laughs> Wait, can I ask Liam a little question hole. before? Yes, we, before please. We... Okay, oh. so Liam, what's one thing in 2023 that you want more scene partners of yours to do? <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, that's a really good question. Wait, like on on camera? I can't. Or like just question. like when I'm. Oh, okay. Um, ooh. Uh, I don't know. I want more eating ass. I'm just like in the mood for it right now. Go to the White Lotus. Lotus. <laughs> Where can people find you to to look at your ass and watch it be eaten? What's your ass? It's it's being served up. Uh, it's Liam Hunt, and uh, yeah, uh, there'll be a lot of stuff uh, coming out here in 2023. We'll be sure to catch you and worship me coming out on NakedSword.com in a couple of months. And we will be right back with Evan Rotzkatz doing Falcon Police. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Discretion Advised. I am Mark McNamara, joined by my good Judy Fruity, John Hill, and the expert of everything under the sun, Evan Rotzkatz. Hi, Evan. Hi, happy to be here. I have some questions for you. Since Great. you are an expert of everything, like I said, what what are your feelings about porn? Where are we at? What is the state of the world of porn? Can I be like honest, honest? No. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we're not in a great place. Um, I feel like there's a sanitization of the porn landscape at present. I feel like there are too many people who view porn as a side project rather than a career path. And I think that's to the deterrent of porn. And I think a lot of these porn companies are sort of trying to match the OnlyFans aesthetic in a way that sort of makes, it sort of homogenizes so much of the porn that's out there. And, you know, we were talking in that last segment about that Albi body type, which by no means is like a rare body type. He looks like a lot of guys that go to your local community college. But you don't really see that body type reflected in a lot of present day porn. You either get like muscle, twink, bear, but like the categories sort of leave out a lot of the in-betweens. And I'm always someone that's favored a sort of in-between body. And I feel like it's just missing in addition to a lot of other types. But I think that part of the conversation has been excavated. So I'm just more than anything. And I'm long winded, I realize, but I'm just bored. Are there any studios that are the worst that need the, that need a citation? Who, who's failing us? Who's bringing us down? So I am a child of of the 90s. And so I really, I grew up with Sean Cody. And I mean like old school, old school Sean Cody, condom Sean Cody. I used to print Sean Cody on my black and white printer and hide them in books <laughs> in my bedroom. Uh, I know Colby Keller as a Sean Cody model, just to give context to all of this. And I feel like Sean Cody was just the apex of my formative understanding of the gay male figure and gay male sex. And I... 
I can pinpoint it to when like Jess and Calvin departed. And there are a few others as well. Um, in thinking that it just really jumped the shark. I'm so, I have to force myself to come to Sean Cody these days. It feels more like punishment <laughs> than <laughs> pleasure. Um, and you, I don't know what Can you talk to is, me about forcing you know yourself what? to come? <laughs> but you know what? Here I am. I mean, you know, I'm Boo Boo the Fool in a sense because I'm the one that's still logging on with some, you know, element of hopefulness around something that clearly does not respect my viewing taste anymore. But I just miss the kind of guy that like, again, was so formative to me. I just don't see him reflected in the porn that I like. To the point where, like, I often find myself getting off to old Sean Cody videos, um, you know, pirated online. Are we anti- We're anti-pirating, right? You're a porn company, so you're like, stop <laughs> yeah. on my wrist, right? Let's not pirate. But we no, know what happens. We know what happens. Yeah, okay, of yeah. Course. Sorry, no, but I'm not advising. It should not be done. I do not endorse it, in the words of Valerie Cherish. Um, but no, I just, I miss, I miss the sensibility that was present in 20, I think, like, the 20... 2020, excuse me, 2010 to like 2015 porn. And that was the sweet spot for me. Mm, same. 2010, Agreed. 2015. Okay, good. I, I still, still think that I have a spank bank that's around that era. That's uh-huh. right around when I met Mark. Yeah, I think you did come to a shoot that was, tw- was it 2015? Maybe yeah, it was 16. Maybe, maybe when we started going downhill, you're the cause. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, can I add one more thing? Yeah. I also just feel like there's... Um, Increasingly, when I when I see a lot of these OnlyFans videos online, I just feel like I see transactional sex happening more and not sex for enjoyment. And mind you, I think there's an you know aspect of porn where it's always going to be tra- not always it's often going to be transactional. But I think that in the past that was something that I wasn't so keenly aware of. And I just see a lot of people who are really really hot but don't look like they actually enjoy fucking. And that's something that I really really miss that Sean Cody was able to bring. You would see these straight men. Men, sometimes air quote straight men, sometimes legitimately straight men, putting a cock up their ass for the first time and blissing out. And I feel like that's something <laughs> that does not exist anymore. Agree. Well said. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. All right. We're going to introduce a new segment here called Falcon Police. Actually, we did it on the finale, right? John yes, read we're me doing for it for real now. That was, like a, that was like a live experiment, a which you were also at. You were at our live show, which you couldn't hear because it was uh, um, at that bar that was crazy. No, not now. the season premiere live show. The season finale live show, you did a Falcon Police. Anyways, really work. Evan, you're going to give us a Falcon Police. Give us some citations. Tell us all about it for the White Lotus. What do you got? Especially if you want to get specific. um, Explain to me the premise. Yeah. Take 60 seconds and tell us um, the implications of Porsche's fashion and tell us top (laughs) to bottom why it's important. Okay, so you, but even if I don't feel that way, but you want me to defend it. No, no you have to tell defend the truth. It, you can just tell the truth. Just like Portia what it looks means, like Diego it... Sands on vacation. That's okay. Minute the, starts that's now. Entire. <laughs> okay, listen, I am here for Portia's fashions. In that, I think that the issue right now is that people have this understanding that they want people on television to look extreme, right? To either be like Carrie Bradshaw, seasons two, three, and four of Sex and the City, a little bit of season six, or they want them to look like absolutely ridiculous. I think the thing about Portia is she's meant to be this entitled assistant who's traveling overseas, who literally threw a bunch of shit in her suitcase, ostensibly doesn't have a lot of money because of her billionaire boss who does not value a personal assistant. She shoved a bunch of shit in her suitcase and she's whimsical, right? When she gets out in the morning, she throws on a bunch of different things. Maybe they mismatch, maybe they don't. At the end of the day though, I don't find Portia to be a fashion icon. Of course not, she's not a fashion icon. Megan Fahey and Harp Harper and, and Daphne, those are the fashion icons. However, the discourse has spun us so around that she's sort of like this thing that people must hate and I do not think her style rises to the level of the vitriol that's online about her I think she's just someone with a limited understanding of how to put clothes together but to be honest with you I like part of her wardrobe oh wow wow all right so he has no opinions on Portia good thank you (laughs) Uh, that, that was very well said look at you did you prepare that were you ready to go in no I'm a professional baby oh my god look at him Evan, Look thanks for doing the show. We love you. Come back no, soon. No, I want to do it forever. Where you know. can people listen, follow, and find you? They can listen to both of my podcasts. I have Shut Up Evan, which is an interview chat show, not dissimilar to this one. And I have a podcast called Drop Your Buffs, which is a survivor themed podcast in which we rewatch old episodes of Survivor and interview alumni from the show. And on Instagram. There it is. And on Instagram. <laughs> on Instagram. All Can right, I come we will back? be yes. Please, come back. Be here every episode. Okay, great. Someone has to have something to say. 
And we'll be right back with a Q&A, oh, yeah. right? Is that, that what's going to happen next, Cameron? A Q&A answering fan questions when we come back. Welcome back. It's time for Q and Gay. The sun is rising in LA and I'm uh, recording from my kitchen. I look like the nine and a half weeks movie poster. Erotic. Okay. We're going to answer some <laughs> fan questions. Some are audio. Some are written in. Here's one. I believe this might be a prank, but let's just see what happens when I pl- press play. Why is my pussy so wet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> my pussy is so wet. Is that well, a question? So let's, let's play yep. that again. Agreed. Just, well, let, let, let's answer it. Hold on. Why is my pussy so wet? Well, that could be for a few different reasons. Number one, you're looking at my close friends on Instagram. That's probably why. Uh, Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Let's see. I think it's discharge. Go see someone. All right, here's another one. Hey, guys. So I'm at home for the holidays, so obviously I got rid of my photo on Grindr. But I got a picture from my best friend's husband, who I guess is gay, uh, even though he's married to a woman. So... Do I tell him that it's me so he stops and gets off the app? Or, like, do I tell her? I don't know what to do. <gasps> oh, fuck. Oh. Okay. Well, I would tell, I would say bros before hoes, even if she's your friend. Just tell him. Be like, yo. I would tell him first and then say, you have five minutes and I'm going to tell your wife. Tell him both. Yeah, he's got the no husband one. has to tell his wife. It's not going to sound great if the wife knows. Then the wife is now embarrassed in front of her friends. So the husband has to tell it. You have to t- tell the guy to tell the wife or else you're going to. It's got to come from the husband. Right? Wow. I am kidding. Not bros before hoes. I say tell the wife. Say get away from your trolling husband. No, because then she's going to feel weird with a friend and she's going to be embarrassed. And it's... She's the victim here. So I would, you're right. I would say directly to him, I would say like, hey, it's me. And like, you know what? I have done this before, not in that situation, but I saw a cheating, a, a friend's boyfriend cheating on him. And he saw that I saw them. He was like making out with someone on like an early train, like after a one night stand or something. And I was like, oh shit. Like they, and they were like boyfriend, boyfriends. And I, I even kind of, like, I think he assumed I would say something because it was obvious and i and i did and later he thanked me he was like thanks like i'm really i didn't know i was i was i had a secret i didn't know how to tell um but it's always a tough position to be in i changed my mind i say call the police immediately yeah because you don't know now if your friend is in danger he's gonna be so (laughs) embarrassed you've got to fuck him and then call the police (laughs) period dot fuck him call the police next uh okay here are some things written now we have one that's audio that uh cameron has let's play this one okay Oh, it's Bo Butler. Okay. <sighs> this question is for John. Okay. Would you rather top a twink or stop and think? <clears throat> I might have a... Actually, I would top a twink. Okay. Great. Do I not... Is there a joke in there that I'm not getting? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I would top a twink. Although, sometimes when I'm... I don't know. It depends on the twink. All right. Well, it's time to stop and think. Do we have any others? <laughs> <laughs> Here's some things that we've that were written in. Um, who were your favorite stars from when you first started watching porn? Mine was Tuck Johnson. Remember him? That's from someone named Joe. Francois Sagat. Everyone has a Francois Sagat story in their like beginning of their porn journey. Wait, did Francois Sagat get his nipples tattooed red? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> yeah, because like in some of his photos, they like suddenly became hot pink. Yeah, no, I think that he got them like uh, l- largened, larger, enlarged, enlarged, enlarged. Okay, he got them largened. Uh, Kai asked, "Which celebrity would be would we be surprised with that you each have slept with?" Mark, you go. I think you have probably a better answer than me. Francois Sagat, keep it on that train. Mm. I, I, I don't know if I have actually slept with somebody famous like that. Hmm. Like, really? Not th- that's surprising. Name four celebrities whose dick you sucked. I really don't. I can't think of any. Celebrities? Like who? Michael Jackson? Anybody from, like, Winter House? I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything from, anybody from what? Like, any Bravo celebrities oh. you, like, sucked or fingered? No. Yes. 
Yeah. Well, no, 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 not Bravo. Uh, no. Who? I name someone. You can do this. Name someone that I hooked up with won't. Jonathan Bennett before Mean Girls. <sighs> we both worked at Abercrombie and Fitch. I love him. He's great. It was okay. Good. An awakening. Nice privates. <laughs> good privates. It was epic. Good. All right. Well, Damn. is that it? Is that are we done? Did we did uh, we answer all the burning okay. questions? No, there's a bunch here. Okay. Um, do famous people take and send nudes like the rest of us? Do you send yes. them for dating apps if you're well known? I think they do. Yeah, that I do mm-hmm. get nudes from yeah. some folks. Uh, yep. Would you Same come to them. Toronto for a show? Can we yes. book us? Yes, I would love to. Cameron. We're actually contrary to popular belief, we're very entertaining. I know. <laughs> I just don't like to be here. Is as soon as we hang up, that's when the the real conversation starts. True. <laughs> if we had a, a studio, we didn't have to like troubleshoot our own tech. It'd be. Uh, you couldn't off. imagine. <laughs> yeah, well, could you imagine? We'd take over the world. <laughs> uh, I love you. Happy almost Christmas. You're my favorite. Love you. Guy. This is our. Doing. Was this our last show of 2022? What year are we in? Yeah. This is Go our out. last show. <gasps> Going out oh was my a faint God. fizzle. We got a little pop, a poop. <laughs> Boop, 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 boop. Well, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget, you can watch the full episodes on our new YouTube channel and subscribe to our newsletter at, at discadpod.com. Make sure you follow us on all the socials. Keep the questions Discad coming. Pod. We want to hear from you. Leave voice, mo- be- voice we, memos. Please do. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't want to know if we had to fuck a twink or stop and think, but something along those lines is great. And that's D-I-S-C-P-O-D, Discad Pod. Bye, guys. I love you, Mark. Bye, Cameron. <laughs>